Happy fall, friends. I'm excited to celebrate with some new recipes. They're all quick and easy. One of them I consider to be the easiest, coziest, ultimate fall recipe. I can't wait to make it again. I also sandwiched a little bit of an Aldi fall shop with me in between them. So grab you a warm drink and let's get started. Tonight I'm making something I've never ever made before. I'm making a shepherd's pie. I'm starting out by browning up some very lean ground beef and an onion. I know that originally shepherd's pie uses lamb. We just don't eat that. I'm using ground beef. I'm also using my 12 inch cast iron skillet because I'm hoping this can be a one pot dish. I don't want to have to transfer it to a casserole dish. I think that will work fine here too. While my meat's cooking up, I'm going to give you a little bit of story time. I have only eaten shepherd's pie one time in my whole entire life. It was one of those foods I had convinced myself I didn't like it. Even never having tried it, I just knew I wouldn't like it all that mixed together. Well, it's probably been about a year ago. My very soon to be son-in-law had us over for dinner and he made shepherd's pie and I thought to myself, well crap, I'm gonna have to eat this. Even though I don't like it because I wanna hurt his feelings. But let me tell you, it was delicious. I couldn't believe I'd had my whole adult life missing out on this dish. I've been thinking about it ever since. Well, I saw Jen on Cook, Clean, and Repeat make a shepherd's pie, and that settled it. I had to make it. The recipe that I'm gonna have pinned for you below, I found it back after Ryan first made the shepherd's pie for us. And I'm taking bits of that, and bits of what I saw Jen do, because y'all know she's a great cook. I'll leave her video making her pie down below for you. And I'm just combining them all up and we're gonna see what we get. Now that I can see this is not gonna have a whole lot of oil, I'm gonna put just a little bit of salt. I'm not gonna use a whole lot, because I'm gonna use something else in here that's pretty salty. I'm gonna give it a little bit of pepper, or a lot bit of pepper. Y'all know I like pepper gonna use a little bit of this smoked paprika. We've really been enjoying this little spice. I'm also, at this point, gonna put in a little bit of garlic. And the recipe that I have linked calls for a can of tomato soup, but I'm actually gonna use a couple tablespoons of tomato paste. If you've not seen this trick, <laughs> this is how I freeze tomato paste after I've opened it. And then you can just break off whatever you need. The tomato paste just has a whole lot richer flavor than using tomato soup. And I have made some casseroles and skillet dishes with tomato soup, and they never have as much richness as I want. So you can use it if you like it, but I just prefer tomato paste. The recipe also calls for an entire 12 ounce bag of mixed veggies. I have this bag that I'll probably use the cup out of and you know, this is probably plenty for us. It's got a little icy <laughs> because it's been in the open in the freezer for uh, you know a, a week or so, but it will be fine. Just gonna stir that in and feel free to use whatever you want. Jen used peas and carrots in hers. And honestly, I looked for some peas and carrots just frozen because that really seemed more appetizing to me too. That we're going to go with what we got. What's really going to bring the flavor to this one is this McCormick Beef Stew Seasoning Pie. And I'm going to sprinkle this whole packet down in here. And the recipe I'm using said to use some, about a half a cup I believe it was, of water. But I'm actually going to use some beef broth. And I'm going to start with this half a cup. And I may go ahead and pour the rest of it in too. You don't want this to be soupy, you know. It's got to be, get, you know, like thickened up. Oh, it's smelling good. I think I am going to give it just another little splash of some beef broth. I'm going to let this simmer here for about five minutes, and then I'm going to give it a taste, and we will move on to the next step. I'm making up this bag of instant mashed potatoes. This one serves eight. You could also feel free to whip up your own fresh ones. That'd be delicious. I'm just making these according to the package instructions. 
tasted this little dish. It smells wonderful. So now I'm just gonna leave it in my cast iron skillet. If you don't have an oven safe skillet, you can put it over into a greased nine by 13 casserole dish. Then we'll just do the very same thing after that point. Put our mashed potatoes all across the top of your meat mixture. It looks like I'm using the whole eight serving package of mashed potatoes and that's a-okay. <laughs> Looks like I actually might have could have used another serving or two. Make it a little bit thicker. You know what I'm thinking. This is one of my rustic meals. <laughs> I always say my food doesn't look pretty and perfect, but it looks rustic and delicious. <laughs> And I don't know if cheddar cheese goes on top of the authentic shepherd's pie, but we're definitely cheesing this one up. And let's go ahead and sprinkle a little parsley on here just for a little color. Now we're gonna put this in a 400 degree oven. Recipe says for 30 minutes, but I'm gonna check mine at 20 since my skillet is already hot. You just need to get everything warmed and the cheese on your mashed potatoes melted and a little bit brown. The cast iron worked perfectly. I pulled mine out actually after 15 minutes. This is amazing. I can't wait to make this again. This is a total comfort meal. One skillet, so quick, so easy, so hearty and delicious. All your veggies, meat in one, so, so good. This just screams fall. I can just see me and Ed Sheeran Sitting under Big Ben, him singing, thinking out loud to me. I can just taste it. I believe he'd like this. I really do. <laughs> Before we go into the next recipe, I want to take you with me into Aldi. I was by here Friday to pick up a few things for the wedding shower. They had so many fall things. I got a couple things, but there's some stuff I really wanted to look at, and I wanted to make sure that you guys saw it in case any of it interests you. You might wanna get out to Aldi and get you some. So let's head on into the store, and I'll show you some of this cool stuff I saw. I don't know about these pumpkin spice or apple cinnamon yogurt covered pretzels. I don't know if that sounds good or not. Okay, this little charcuterie shop is actually what I wanted to come back in here and show you. And a lot of this stuff has sold out, but they had such a great selection of like breadsticks and different kind of little cheese crackers and all these things. This is $9.99 and this is a really good amount of meat. This is 12 ounces and you got three different kinds in here. But this is the stuff that got me. Look at this beautiful honey and you have the comb in it. All kinds of oils. You've got uh, rosemary, chili infused, and a garlic infused. I got this when I was here and we ate the apricot and cumin spread. But look at all these, a cherry and rosemary, fig and honey and pear and cinnamon. These are great to bake up a big wheel of brie and serve this over the top. And they have these little uh, chutneys and spreads. They've got a sour cherry and a fig. This red pepper, and I didn't get it the other day because I still have some of the pineapple red pepper one that I get at Kroger's. I did get the onion chutney because Harry and David's used to have this onion relish and I would mix that with a block of softened cream cheese like with my hand mixer and dip that into tortilla chips and it was delicious. Lots of pickles and olives and then here's all kinds of little tapenade spreads that you can put on your breads. Here's a green olive, roasted red pepper and artichoke black olive these just look so good and then i so wish that i had seen this because i paid a lot for a whole grain mustard i think i was at target and i just got it because i needed it this is only three dollars here and i am loving my whole grain mustard and down here they have lots of little bags of these grilled tostini toast you've got a sea salt 
and um, a garlic and herb one. And all of those things I just showed you are in addition to all this regular, what I call charcuterie, cheese, and meat section at the back of my Aldi. These little peanut butter filled pumpkins, those would be so cute on a fall charcuterie board. Got pumpkin butter, but I don't need that because I have some from Jam and Jams. Always have your pumpkin quick breads. And you know how much I love little cakes and cookies for the top of my coffee cups. Aldi had a really big selection of Halloween stuff. Lots of indoor and outdoor decor, lots of inflatables, and lanterns, kind of metal light up things, just lots of little light up things, period. And these earrings were all so adorable. And we had just a few uh, decor pieces for fall, just some candles and tobacco baskets and just a few little odds and ends, but it was all really, really pretty. And it was all just kind of mixed in together in that one area. And I will have to say, Aldi has a really good, not only selection, but they've got some pretty good prices. Very comparable on these big bags of bulk Halloween candy. And this is my first time seeing the Aldi gear. I had not seen this stuff in my store yet. Got a backpack, some shoes, some pajamas. And this is super nice. It's a big, like a Tervis type tumbler. It's a good size the nice little lid and everything that's $6.99 I hadn't seen the beanie that's pretty good right there I like that yeah. I like this little maple leaf serving platter I think it's really cute you think this mini cast iron is kind of weird but if you have a smoker or a grill and you want to melt butter these are perfect these are really nice it's black but it is a kea wood that would be a beautiful big salad bowl. They also have a really pretty dough bowl. I thought these were just adorable and also this one. I have no use for any of that. It also came across these $10 like cutting boards. Here's one that looks like a leaf and I thought this one was adorable. It looks like an acorn. For 20 bucks you can get a washable runner I think this is kind of like the Ruggables that we've all seen. I don't know how well they hold up or anything. I haven't seen anybody talk about them, but that's neat. I did about $133 worth of damage. That's pretty good haul for this amount of stuff, and I'll show it to you real quick. Most of it is the same old, same old stuff, but let's start with my fall items. I got these crunchy caramel cookies, and there's little leaves and pumpkins, and look, they sit on the side of your coffee cup. I love those little staruffles that go on the top, so I knew I would love that. And look at that picture. I had to get me some whipped cream. Y'all know I take my coffee black, and I do like flavored coffee, but um, I thought some whipped cream would be good on it. So I got this Burble Carmen. No, <laughs> Burble. <laughs> okay, Bourbon Caramel. I don't know why I can't talk today, but that's what this is. Bourbon, caramel, whipped dairy topping. And I think that would be great on coffee or maybe some pumpkin pies, lots of things. And we always get the little seasonal truffles. And um, these are the autumn edition. Now back to the regular stuff. Got uh, some romaine hearts. I got a bag of sweet Vidalia onions and avocado I thought I had two little Romas. One of them must have rolled off. Some regular potato chips, dipper tortilla chips, some corn chips. Back there, some sea salt pita chips and some barbecued chips. Here's all Patrick's favorites. He's got uh, nutty bars, Swiss rolls, and these little like tag-along Girl Scout cookies. I've been enjoying apples and applesauce. I guess it's just the fall in me. But I got me some cinnamon applesauce. Always grab an Italian seasoning and a ranch seasoning packet. I got a package of cheese tortellini, flour tortillas, and I got some whole wheat pita bread. Got some melting wafers for the holidays coming up. A big bag of tostadas, some croutons. I went ahead and got this. This jar is good for a long time, so I know I'll run out of what I've got. I always keep garlic on hand. I've been enjoying pesto and I've had basil. 
I could not wait to try this sun-dried tomato. I love their pineapple salsa, a can of refried beans, two cans of cream of chicken soup, a can of black beans, a can of whole berry cranberry sauce, holidays, two cans of tomato sauce, a can of tomato paste, sweetened condensed milk, chili powder, and sage. If y'all have seen the video where my mom made her dressing, she puts a little sage in it, so I thought I would go ahead and buy some. Shells and cheese, olive oil, got some sandwich bags, Kleenex, family size ranch dressing, Duke's mayonnaise, bacon bits, box of clubhouse crackers, bag of sugar, penne pasta, box of saltines, cheese it I've never seen this before. This is like stovetop stuffing but it's made with Hawaiian bread and it's a sage and onion flavor. Over here in the dairies, I got Kobe Jack cheese cubes, got some string cheese, some Gouda cubes. I got some of this for the shower. These were so stinking good. I had to have some more of them. Got a pack of provolone slices, Cool Whip, and a big thing of spreadable butter. I'm now hooked on the rotisserie chicken. This will be the first that I've ever gotten from Aldi. I got a roll of sugar cookie dough and a bag of mixed vegetables. You know those days when you've been to the grocery store, then you come home and you don't feel like cooking the groceries? <laughs> That's what this little recipe is all about. We're gonna use some of this rotisserie pulled chicken. We're gonna have some easy, easy chicken tostadas. You're gonna love this little recipe. I've got these pre-made tostadas, but if you did not have these, if you just had regular corn tortillas, you can lay them out on your sheet pan and brush some oil on them. You want them glossy looking. You don't want it like puddling on it that much oil, but get them good and glossy. Coat each side, put them in the oven about 450 degrees, cook them about five minutes on each side, and then you would have your own like homemade tostadas. I went ahead and bought these because I knew I was making this tonight. We use these a lot of times when we're making crunch wrap supremes, but you know what? If I don't have these when I'm making crunch wraps, I'll just use a regular old and um, hard taco shell or even tortilla chips or Doritos. I mean, long story short, what I'm saying, friends, is you got options for anything and everything I make. I just <laughs> like to give you options here. Now we're going to work on the filling or the topping for our tostadas. And I have a rotisserie chicken this, that's already been shredded up. I'm just going to take some of the bigger pieces and shred them up too. But if you do have to make your own little tostadas, this is a good thing to be doing while they're cooking up. We just don't keep tor torn. <laughs> we don't keep corn tortillas here that much. Because we just, we prefer flour. But on something like this, you want corn. I'm going to be generous here. We're going to add some other things in here. But you don't want to be skimpy on your chicken. And, like I said, options. You could throw you in some canned chicken. It's not going to have this good rotisserie seasoning to start with. But you could use canned chicken. I like to cook chicken up every week or so in my crock pot. With just some seasonings of my choice, your choice and a little butter on it. And I just shred that up and keep it in the freezer for when I wanna put a meal like this together. Okay, that is probably a cup and a half, maybe closer to two cups. Now I'm gonna put in about a cup of just jarred salsa. I'm using this right here. It's from Aldi's, it's a small batch. It's supposed to be restaurant style. Then a couple tablespoons of some taco seasoning. I had this opened that I had just used maybe a spoonful out of, so I'm gonna finish it off. Then I've got some black beans that I have rinsed and drained, and I got a can of sweet whole kernel corn that I've rinsed and drained. Now I'm just gonna incorporate all this together, and I've just got this on, oh, a medium low heat. Just wanna get it kinda incorporated, the seasonings throughout it, and everything just kind of warmed up. And this is probably more than what I'm gonna need for them four tostadas I laid out, but I'd rather cook it up in small batches if we want another one. I throw it in real quick, just takes a second to heat them. But this is one of those fillings that's just good. If I have extra, I'll put it in the freezer and I can pull it out and make tostadas again. I could throw it on top of nachos. I could wrap it up in a flour tortilla. 
and fry it up in some oil on top of the stove. Like I said, it's all about options. Your girl likes to have choices here. Actually, this old girl just likes to cook once and eat a few times out of it. <laughs> That's really what I like to do is just to kind of, you know, work myself out of a job here. But when you're busy, especially if you're working, your kids are in school, you got sports in the fall, all the carnivals and junk when school's starting back, it is just nice to have things that do double duty and save you time. I'm all about that here. Now we're just building our tostadas. Okay, you know what? Now that I'm loading these up, they're pretty big. I might use all this mixture today. I don't know. I'm gonna put a little Monterey Jack cheese, or a lot, all over the top of mine in my true fashion. I didn't have any in the fridge. I had to go pull this out of the freezer. So good thing we heat these up in the oven. <laughs> it's gonna need it. And I just went with Monterey Jack because I think the white cheese melts pretty on top of all this colorfulness. And it's just a mild flavor with all the other flavors you have going on in here. But as usual, feel free to use cheddar or whatever you like. I'm gonna bake those up at 450 degrees for about five minutes. This is one of those meals that no one has to know how easy it is. It is filling, it is delicious. Both of these recipes tonight were full of veggies, all kinda in one dish. I absolutely love that. They're perfect for cozy fall nights without a lot of trouble. If you enjoyed tonight's video, I'd love it if you give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for being here and if you need some more inspiration, be sure and check out the video I have on the screen for you. Until next week, I send you love from my kitchen.